Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Camel. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Can we just admire our brand new Smart Money Happy Hour branded cocktail glasses? Very exciting, George. I feel like we are official. What a day. We have made it. Video, cocktail glasses. What's next? It's happening. I mean, just another great episode of Smart Money Happy Hour, which oh. is a podcast that... Two friends know. who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, what's going on in the world, and of course, your money. And today we are talking about how to ethically save a buck. And this is very dangerous, Rachel, because there's a spot where it crosses the line. And I'm worried that I'm much more willing to cross the line than you. So there's I'm a there is a goes. there's a there's a level of life that is black and white, and then there's the gray. I live in the gray. So baby. it's like, are you are you dark? Are you in the darker shade of gray? Are you in the lighter shade of gray? You know, where, which which way are you? So we're going to be talking about it because some of these ways to save money could be sketchy to some, could be savvy to others. So that's a good way. We're going to gonna put dive it. in, but first, what are we drinking, George? This is a mocktail. It is a blackberry mm. mojito mocktail. Oh, it's a mocktail. Yeah, so there's no alcohol in this. See, it's that's just what I love a about fun... a great mocktail. You just feel like you're drinking something fun. You don't need the alcohol. And this has like real muddled blackberries mm-hmm. in it, fresh mint, mm-hmm. and it's really good. It's delicious, actually. So It's not too sweet, not too sour. For those that don't imbibe, you're winning today if you make this one. <laughs> so we're going to give you a rating and reveal the cost per glass at the end of the episode and tell you what's in it. So stick around. That's right. All right, George, let's get down to business. Brass tax. Here you are. Is that what they say? I don't know. Let's get down to brass tax. Let's get down to it. I'm kind so, of nervous. I feel like I'm going to be real vulnerable. I can't like wait. I'll get judgment for this. No, because I feel like we do differ in this subject. So I'm really excited. I'm curious. Yeah, in that you're a good person and I'm not. That's no, it's difference. not a right or wrong, George. People have feelings. There might, people, there might be a right or wrong. People. But we're going to get it. I feel like I live in the gray. So I'm curious to see where we land on this. Yeah, because with inflation and everything going on these days, people are really trying to find ways to save. And that's legitimate. Now, in in the economy we're in, the world we're in now, obviously people are like, gosh, I want to cut back. So that's a natural bent. But there's also, I think you're just born to want to save a buck or two. There are those that don't really care. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to just pay for it or do what I need to do. And there's those that want to beat the system. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> maybe it's Maybelline. We don't know. We're not sure. That's what you're going to stick around and find maybe we're out. We're going to figure it out. Yeah. So uh, we're going to break down some situations here and see who who's maybe guilty of, of being savvy or sketchy. Yeah. All right. Should we go right into it? I'm nervous. Yes. Okay. Let's play the game. You ready? Yep. Subscriptions. Okay. Sharing streaming services passwords. I think it's savvy. What What's your take? I think it's cheap. <gasps> That's not even an option. It's savvy or sketchy. I, will, I may have told this story on this podcast before. It floored me. I didn't realize how often people really do share passwords, especially among family. If that's where you draw the line, this is going to be a hilarious episode. <laughs> because we were we had a Ramsey family trip. I'm so throwing my family into the bus right now. And we all were at breakfast one morning. And my sister, who is older than me with three children, was like, yeah, the Netflix messed up. And my dad was like, yeah, the password got messed up with the things. We had to change it. And here's the new password. And I was like, I'm sorry. Do y'all share a Netflix account? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, you are you are all adults in this room that have jobs. Like, be responsible and pay for your what own. What was their response to ne- you calling them out on this? Oh, were they just like, like, it's not a big deal. If there's a family. You can have so many profiles on it True. and all of this. I just think, I think it's a per household thing. I think you were jealous you weren't invited. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, they're all sharing this without me. They didn't tell me. Wow. I, so it I is technically know. against their terms of service. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I mean, if you look into the it, they would say, arrested? hey, it's Did per I just... household. No, that's the thing. No one's going to jail over this. Netflix knows people are doing this. It's just a part of life at this point. And I'll say this, George. You came over to our house. That's true. Do you remember this? Yep. We watched Dumb and Dumber. Winston invited me. Yes. I was elated, (laughs) to say the least. I told Winston at one point, George had never seen Dumb and Dumber. So he was like, we're calling him right now and seeing what he's doing tonight. He's coming over. We're going to watch Dumb and Dumber. Uh, Well, it it was free on HBO Max. Which you guys didn't have. We did not have. So George gave us his password to log in. But I felt okay with it because he was in the room. Like... Sure, it is you. I'm logging into my account. Yep. Well, fast forward. I don't know. I've told you this, George. <gasps> you never logged out. I didn't. I forgot. And my children were watching like different movies and stuff, and I didn't even think twice about it. And it came up 
at one point and it said log in and it had George Camel and I was like, <gasps> we've been using George's. <laughs> Wow! I brought you to the dark side in your children. I, but I logged out. I couldn't. I I I could logged out. I couldn't do it, George. I couldn't do it. Uncle so. George gave those kids a generous <laughs> gift, and you decided to strip that joy from them. Wow! Oh, I think I might. I don't know what it is in me. It's you just, need to go to like counseling for this. I don't know what it. I don't know what it is. It just feels wrong. This Other is, things don't, but that one does. For okay. Me. okay. So Let's I'm, keep going. I'm in the savvy boat. You're in the sketchy boat on that one. Here's one. Turning on Amazon. Subscribe and save to get the discount and then immediately canceling. Because oh. you can cancel any time with subscribe and save. Savvy. I've never done it. I didn't even know it was an option. Oh. Where's even... the turnaround on this one? Because it I'm... says cancel anytime. You can cancel anytime. So I don't feel yeah. guilty. So it, they don't say like you can't cancel within five seconds. So you're really not subscribing. You're just getting it one time, saying you're subscribing, and then canceling. I feel okay about this one. <laughs> wow. Do you feel okay about this oh, one? Oh, 100%. Oh. <laughs> I'm just shocked that you're okay with it. I am. I'm okay with that one. It's Amazon. Bezos isn't hurting. <laughs> he doesn't even own the company no, I'm in anymore. Trouble. Okay, with travel, right. do you take unused toiletries from your hotel room? Yes, if they're good. If it's like a high end hotel, you know, you paid for that, by the way. I agree. I'm with this. The toiletries aren't like a free amenity. It's included in the cost of the room that you paid for. Yes, I'm all about taking. It. And you know what they're doing now in some hotels? We stayed in a great hotel in Virginia Beach. But now it's like the pump. It's like a big. Oh, you can't take anything. They don't have the, the pumps small are attached ones. to the wall. Yeah, they don't have this. They don't have the little small ones. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm a taker. I'm Do you take taking, like toilet paper and stuff? No, gosh, okay. no. And don't take things that are like part of the hotel. I'm not taking the blow dryer and the coffee machine. You know, right. <laughs> like, but occasionally a tea bag for the road. Uh, I've taken a hand. Know? I've taken a hand towel. A hand towel. Yeah, my That's... makeup so was falling. Out and stuff. I was like, that I, feels need like I was like, I need a towel. I did take a towel, like a like a one of those, not like a washcloth, not a towel, but the medium the size. The hotel price includes your usage of those. I know towels. I did steal it. What did you steal though? Earlier, I missed it. I went a right tea over. Bag? <laughs> a bag, you know, a spot of tea, like in the uh, <laughs> yeah, and like the coffee little machine thing. Yeah, because yeah. you just like the tea. Yeah, and I'm not really a tea guy, and so when I see tea, I'm like, that'll be good for the future in case I want to be a tea guy. <laughs> Try it out without Just having my that, little stash. I don't have to commit to an entire box. Just get, but you pay for it technically. That's what I'm saying. I think it's great. So I never I'm glad think about we're on the taking same the page. Tea. We both think that's savvy. Okay. Uh, giving only a penny to suggested donations at museums and attractions. I've never experienced this, but I don't think. First of all, I'm not like carrying around pennies. <laughs> so minimum, I think emotionally, I would do five dollars. I'd do a dollar. Now, we were at a children's play the other day. Oh, why, what were you doing at a children's well, play, Well, our friends, they direct these. Okay, it was for support yeah, like of a friend. Yeah, youth theater, and so they, okay. they want us to go. So I went to the play. All of the snacks are donation only. Mm. And so I'm like, I don't know what. Like, what is, what's a LaCroix to you, donation-wise? <laughs> do you put more or do you pay less? So I put a dollar. That feels very fair. That, that feels like market price. Okay. That like, I don't fair. know what the, you know, is it going to the kids? Doing, is this, I already paid for the ticket. Yeah, no, that felt right. Okay. That felt right. Yeah. But no, I'm not doing the penny to suggest the donations. I'm not that. that yeah, level. I'd throw a bill in of some value. A paper bill. A paper bill, yeah. Okay. Uh, data capture discounts. So using multiple emails to sign up for free trials and score more discount codes. All day. Okay, so how many emails? <laughs> All day. We need to play New Girl. Infinite. <laughs> I mean, I have about four or five emails that I rotate through. No way. Yeah. All like Gmail? Mostly Gmail. And are they all close? Like, how do you keep up with them? Is it like George123 at gmail.com or George567? No, they're all different. Uh, they're all different. Okay. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. I just go, uh, I don't think I've tried this email. I'll sign up with this one. And if I get the email, then I know it's a new one because okay. I got the discount. It feels like a lot of work to me. Can I say that? To enter an email address on a website? F multiple. Like, this is saying, like, I'm going to go to the same website... Well, I'm not and signing buy. up for seven free trials at once. It's like, oh, the free trial ended three months ago. I did it at a local restaurant the other day. They have a 10 off 20 for takeout. Okay. And so I was like, oh, well, I'll just use a new email address and I'll get a new $10 coupon. And I did it. Okay. I'm not mad at it. I just wouldn't do it. Why? Uh, keeping up with so many emails feels exhausting to me. And a part of me is like, one email. I, <laughs> you're not keeping up. I'm not signed into seven at once trying to maneuver them. They all go to the same email inbox. Oh. I forward them all. 
to one inbox. But then you have to go to another inbox, George, to forward it to your inbox, right? No, no, they're automatically forwarded. Oh. All emails forwarded to one inbox. I didn't know technology inbox. could do that. It's very nerdy with Me emails. Me either. I didn't know that was a Life thing. Yeah. Email forwarding has been around. Wow. All right. For a if while. You- <laughs> So, Wait, but no, but I'm actually serious. Like, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't know this existed either. Yeah, it's great. How does it work? You, when you sign into th- to your other email address, mm-hmm. there's in the settings, there's a forwarding tab, and you just type in the main email address. And so all emails can be forwarded to that inbox. We now have so many people after this that are starting doing Yeah, this. I'm not mad at it. Yeah. But now so, I have yeah, to go create to keep up with. other emails. But that though. doesn't take long. There's also websites mm-hmm. that let you create like one-time throwaway emails. That can yeah. be for a limited period of time. So it's there's a ton of services out there that make this easy. And I think it's worth it. It feels like, like a lot of work. 15 Still. seconds of my time to save 10 bucks. And the restaurant's getting my business that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten. I love all your justifications. Just I mean, keep going. I'm not scamming the system. They offer this. <laughs> they offer this. I'm just okay. using it multiple times. <laughs> How about using a Google Voice number to sign up for a store's text message in exchange for a discount code? I don't even know what Google Voice number That's is. That's another thing that I do, which makes sense. <laughs> If you are forwarding to different oh gosh, Gmails, you probably so have a Google much. Voice. I feel so overwhelmed. Well, and the Google Voice number, it's not tied to your what phone number. What is that? How do you get it? You can just say, like, I, you're going to, you create a totally unique phone number. Where? Google. So I go to Google and I type in Google fake Voice. number. No, you go to Google Voice and through your Google account, Google Voice. it can create a phone com? number for you. I mean, for real, googlevoice.com. I think it's like voice.google.com. Just okay. Google it, Rachel, and it'll come up. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. So what it does, it creates a new phone number for you okay. that you could use anywhere, and you can get voicemails, you can get calls. The calls can forward to your actual phone without ever revealing your true phone number. That feels like defeating the purpose of having a phone that you don't want anyone to bother you <laughs> because now all this stuff is coming to your phone. Not all this stuff. First of all, you can hit stop to stop any numbers at any time. You can block numbers. Okay. But I find it very useful for the situations where I don't want to give out my real phone number. You're a celebrity, Rachel. You can't just be going out there <laughs> putting your phone numbers on websites. I, I do. <gasps> and nothing sketchy has happened. Well, it's about to. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. It's about to now. going to find it. So okay. yes, I've used Google Voice. Okay, and I'm to not sign okay. So so the so the data the data capture discounts. I'm not mad at any of them. It just feels like a lot of technology and a lot of time. So I okay. don't do them, but okay. I respect those that do. Thank you for your respect. That's a first. <laughs> Let's move on to something in your wheelhouse, Rachel. <laughs> okay, what is that? Return policies. Okay. Have you ever bought something, kept the tag on, wore it, and then returned it? Savvy or sketchy? Um. Old young Rachel probably did do this. I don't. I can't think of a time. Like Are I don't. You saying have, you're old now? Um, not old. I am mid. Are you saying like teenage Rachel? Yeah, like teenage or even 20s. or even early twenties. Like the first like few years of working. Like I I may have done that. So what do you do these days? No, I wouldn't do that. I would wear it and. Would you ever return it? No. You never return clothes. Not after I've worn them. What? Have you, George, you've kept the tag and you've worn it? I mean, not on, like, I've worn clothes and be like, mm, this ain't it, chief, and then I'll return it. I'll keep the tag. Sometimes they're off. You can return it with the tag. You don't need to and have it still attached. And you just give it to them and say, I wore this last night to a party and I just don't I like it. I don't think it. they care about the situation. <laughs> like, so here's what happened. We were at the party. <laughs> I didn't get any compliments on it like I was hoping for. And so I got to tell you, I'm going to return it. How long, is there an hour time limit for you of how long you no. wear something it's to return it? It's whatever their return policy is. And if I remembered to return it within the return policy window. Okay. You know, it doesn't happen often. I'm not like buying clothes and just like <laughs> renting the clothing and then returning it. That's ridiculous. Yeah, 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 yeah. But sometimes I'll be like, oh, that's a cool jacket. I buy the jacket. I wear it and I go, no, this is not for me. Okay. I regret this purchase. Maybe I should because I do regret purchases, but I don't think about returning something after it's so you like, just keep it forever? Well, I end up donating it. Yeah. Wow. Where are you donating? We all need to go wherever <laughs> Rachel's donating very nice, gently used clothing. Okay, so when a company accidentally ships you two of something, what happens? Oh, I would keep the extra. I know, I that's would That's a too. user error. I, that's on them. Do you know that's like currently happening to us like as we speak? What do you mean currently? Like as we, it's happening right now? We ordered a mattress for Charles because he moved out of his crib and got a big boy bed. Sweet Charles. And we got like one of those mattresses that's like an online company, right? So it like shows up in a box at your door and they shipped us two. 
Can and you tell us the company name? Because they're very generous. We even went back to the receipt and it we only paid for one, but we have two. So we have one currently, a queen size mattress, brand new, sitting in our garage right now in the box. You're telling me Charles Cruz has a queen size mattress? <laughs> Isn't he three? <laughs> Yo, you, Is this normal? <laughs> When you For buy, a tiny okay, child? time out. When I buy a bed frame and a mattress, it is going to last him for seven to eight years and beyond. I'm not buying him a tiny little bed and then I have to buy a whole other bed wow. two years later. That's yeah. a waste of money for Charles, me. Charles, no, one I'm day you're going to no, watch you, this I and know your you mommy inve- loves you. You invest. All my kids, we did queen size because I'm not going to go and like get a new bed That's for legit. them. This is just a new level this of This is like, not luxury. me being high maintenance. This is not me being high maintenance. Would a fool be better or a twin? That feels more appropriate for a no, three-year-old. No, serious right now. It is not bad. That is not bad. He will have that into high school. Wow. <laughs> you know what this is, Rachel? This is mom guilt, and I rebuke it. I don't. I, I'm just I shocked. disagree with you. I disagree with I'm the I'm honestly shocker. like, I'm jealous because I never had a queen. Like when I was growing up, it was full-size bed my whole life until I moved out. But like then again, king size my, little, my little room. room in New England was like 200. I mean, it was so tiny. There was hey, no. I know. I'm sorry. A, a queen size bed fit in the room. And that's what I did. Respect. Charles is <laughs> living like a little king. My small king. I love that guy. Okay. Wow. I think that was so where yeah. this king was going to go. I, I think if know. a company ships you the wrong thing, an extra thing. So what do we do with the mattress? Would you, would you call the you company? You can contact back? them. Honestly, they would say, keep it. Mm-hmm. It's too expensive for them to even I know. do anything with it. So what do we do with it? Y'all need it? Y'all need a queen size mattress? Um, <laughs> yes, we should do a giveaway. <laughs> we should do <laughs> Me and you deliver this mattress in person across the country. Wow. Oh, yeah. So yeah. so my answer is it's-, it's Ethically, it, it's, if you want to sleep better at night and you're like actually worried about it, contact the company. Let yeah, them know. Yeah, I would keep it though. Generally, this has happened on Amazon. Yeah. Where they just go, nah, just keep it. Donate oh, yeah, it or that's keep the it. Best. Pet ramp. Hashtag pet ramp. Pet ramp. That's right. All right, social situations. There are some interesting ethical situations that could happen here. Number one, in the dating world, people that go on a lot of dates solely to get free meals and get out of buying groceries or paying for yourself. What do you think about that? Uh, Women that was, that do was, this. That was a little bit of my my dating Rachel vibe. I was like, stop. Yeah, if a guy <laughs> asked me out, I'd be like, sure. Free meal. Free meal. <laughs> Worst case, in college. terrible date, Yeah, but free not meal. like he's like a complete terrible person. And I'm like, ooh. But if it's like a but nice not guy like and he's multiple, like, like, oh, I'm getting out of not having to pay for oh, groceries. Oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't go like there that third day. But, the fr- but if he asked and I'm like, yeah, you're, that's fine. Sure. A girl was doing this every single day. Like she yes. never. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like no, different date, not. every day, free meal. Don't have to cook. Don't have to don't buy groceries. Don't groceries. Oh, that'd be like emotionally exhausting. Agreed. Is it worth the price you're <laughs> no, paying emotionally? No, it's not worth it. No, you can go to Wendy's, go home. Is be it by ethical? Yourself. Yeah, I'm going sketchy. Is it on this ethical? One. Yeah, say no. I don't think that's wrong from an ethics standpoint. You don't think that's wrong? No, you think it's savvy, and I, I say think sketchy. That's savvy. If a guy's offering to pay for your dinner, and you're like, sure, I'll go out to dinner. You're going well, out to the... seven dates, though. Oh my gosh, I'm so judged this episode. Oh my gosh, y'all, is that bad? I don't think that's like absolutely terrible. This I mean, is, you did it for this a is month your opinion. Straight. That's a lot of. We are not food. here to tell you if you're <laughs> a bad person or not. You don't need to feel judged. The YouTube comments will do that for us. But I think if you have the intent oh. of never going on another date with these guys and you're just like, ah, eh, free meal, free meal, free meal. Now, if you're going, hey, hey he asked. One of these guys could be the one. I mean, yeah, maybe it works. Maybe it's like, oh, I actually had a great time. But I think if you go with the intention of like, that's eh, another free meal for me. I don't know that you're going to be willing and open to make the connection. It's a, I don't think it's a ethical thing financially. I just think it's like would be exhausting emotion. Like it, that That's it wouldn't fair. be worth it on an emotional standpoint where I'm like, oh, you got to ask all the questions and keep conversation going for this food. Like that's not worth it. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll redeem you because I think I know your opinion on this one. Oh Breaking the pay it forward drive through line and getting a free meal and you drive away scot-free. No, I would not do that. You would pay for the one Always behind you. Always pay. Regardless yeah. of what's going on. Pretty much, yeah. But someone has to break the line. It can't go on forever. Yeah, you will break the line. You're a breaker, chain through. Whoa. Or a chain. A chain breaker? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to say the Chain breaker. <laughs> Dream maker. Uh, I always will pay because it feels so good. But I, it, then it's happened like a handful of times, not a, not a lot. But there is something you said. How when do you, you know they don't recognize, like, 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 that's Rachel oh, Cruz behind the- me? I want to pay for her meal. But it feels good when you drive up and they're like, the person behind you paid. Would you like to, do they offer? 
I forget. Do they offer like? I think they usually say, "Do you want to pay for that? You want to yes, keep it going?" Absolutely, because it's a good feeling. But you're a breaker. I feel good breaking it. Now I'm not doing it to get the free meal. Sure, because you don't know what's happening. Yeah, if someone's like, "Hey, the guy behind you paid for your meal," that is. I mean, it's a weird situation. Yeah. Because I'm leaving. I'm like, I didn't pay for anything. Yeah. I'd honestly, I'd be, like, hey, I'd be like, what's his total? If it's around the same, <laughs> I'm good to pay. Oh my god! Because then I was like, I would have paid see, for here's my, my thing. Financially, when you do the things we teach here at Ramsey, you get to live like no one else. Later, you live and give like no one else. So in my head, I'm like, twenty bucks, thirty, whatever it is. Like I can pay for that. Sure. So why not just like move the joy on behind me? Because it's forced generosity. It just feels different. This is like there's social Surpri- pressure involved. It's surprise generosity. Because when that car behind you pulls up, they're going to be like, oh, that person was so nice. I just don't get that. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm, I, yeah, so breaking it, I would say, if it happens your, to me in I the future, I might do it. Sketchy, breaking the drive through chain. All right. Next up is food. This one, I think we can all agree on sneaking your own snacks into the movie theater. Yes. Savvy. Always. Yeah. We're doing it every We're time. Doing it. We're doing it, especially after my last trip to the movie theater and it cost, cost me like my whole paycheck. Oh, Remember that's that? right. You walked us through oh the gosh. numbers. Yeah, it was like $200. Again. Never again. Never again. So no, yeah, I would yeah, put stuff in my purse for sure. Um, what's the craziest thing you've snuck in that you're like the most proud of? Alcohol. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> that's next level. In a Yeti. <laughs> you brought the entire Yeti full yeah, of alcohol? No, it was like a, it was like a, you jacket. made a, look, a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I put it in a Yeti and I and I held it in my bag so it wouldn't like because it didn't have a like Smart. I remember it. Yeah. Wow. I did do that. Are you waiting for me to affirm? <laughs> yes. I brought an entire <laughs> cocktail kit into a th- I made my own old fashioned. <laughs> but I brought a night a very tasteful gold rimmed plastic glass. <laughs> and I brought the orange peel. Stop it. And I expressed it and I <laughs> I prom it was the best movie experience with I've you ever and had. Whitney? No, I was with our friend Chris Wright. <laughs> It was a bro night. Yeah, Whitney's not going to sit there and take that. That's so She'd be on like, brand. You're making that this is awkward. on brand. That, She'd that be feels elbowing right. me like people are watching. That feels right. Totally. So I'm a big fan of that. And yes. movie theaters are price gouging. And so until they change their pricing models yeah. to make it affordable, yeah. I'm not doing it. And I learned this from my mom. Mom always is like sneaking food in and stuff. Sharon mm-hmm. is like she's yeah. she exactly will take my food spirit from- animal. Mom, and my mom listens to this podcast, so I love you so much, Mom. But she will take food from events. So, like, even here at Ramsey, if there's, like, a board event or something, and there's, sure. like, a charcuterie board, she has them bring saran wrap up so yes. she can saran wrap the cheeses. And then if we have a family dinner, like, a few days later, she brings them out. And we're like, Mom, was this from the meeting a few nights ago? She's like, yes. So she, like, reuses yes. the food. Oh, yeah, she will pack up any food, any food, and Why reuse it. And then it? freeze it, too. So we do have to ask her when she's like, did you like that cake? And we're like, what year was it, mom? She's like, it's been in there for like three years. She freezes. It's everything. like wine. It's a vintage. I mean, know? I'm not kidding. It is like, it, it's a little, it's a little much. We're like, mom, you can't. She's like, you would never have known. You would have never have known. Did you know? Nope. But that's still so sketchy. That's a win for Sharon. <laughs> I love it. Because the food gets thrown away. I know, not at and Sharon Ramsey's house. it hurts my heart. I'm like, oh. that charcuterie board is very expensive. And someone took a lot of time and love to make that. She'll tell me when we, because we have a, kitchen, a full like kitchen here at Ramsey Solutions. She's told me so many times, Rachel, you just go in, go in the kitchen, ask if they have leftovers so you don't have to cook dinner. That's I'm like, a Mom, great idea. I, mm-mm, I can't. I'm with Sharon. Okay, here's another one. Eating a decent part of your meal at a restaurant and then sending it back in hopes that you get a second meal. No, comped. terrible. That one I'm going sketchy. Sketchy. That's now, if terrible. something is truly wrong with your meal, yes, then say something. Are you a food sender backer person? Uh, yes, if it's warranted. Not like super picky. Yeah, but there have been times where it's the food is legitimately cold. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm paying too much to eat a cold meal. Yes. Yeah. And so I've sent it back, and my wife hates it with a burning, undying passion when I do this because she can't handle the awkwardness. But I'm like, I'm not paying for this. Yeah. And so then, if something's truly wrong. Like, we're gluten-free. So if they bring something out and it's not a gluten-free bun, oh, I'm not going to, you know. Sure, that's, yeah, They yeah. missed the allergy. That's fair. That's fair. And if yep. something's actually wrong on the order or I, you know, I order the steak a certain way and it's wildly off. Yep, yep, yep. Are you? Uh, no. You just I've deal do, with I've it? I've done it. I've done it like once or twice. But I feel like, whew, before I do it. Like well, I'm, like, I'm not mean to the, first of all, be nice to your servers. Yes, for sure. It's generally not their fault. 
You know what I'm more worried about is like the people around me. If they're like, oh my gosh, who's this girl that's Again, like sending the her food pressure. back? Yes, a little bit. You have too much shame. So much Where does any, this come Enneagram from? Enneagram 3, man. Oh, it's, you want to you wanna look good and win? I just want to make sure that like I'm not the, like I don't want to have a sign to be like, I'm not high maintenance, I promise. I wow. Probably, yeah. I like, because I've only done it like twice. But sometimes it was really bad. The times I did it, it was like disgusting. And I was like, I just genuinely can't eat this. Yeah. So I didn't feel bad about that. So and anyways. sometimes they'll tell you, say, hey, if you know, if you don't like the drink, we'll be happy to take it back and make yeah, you. I love when they do that. I do it too. It frees me. Yes, it does. It frees all the person to shame. <laughs> oh, so much shame coming out today, all Rachel. Right. Okay, so I would say I would say what most of it was half sketchy, half savvy. And I was probably more like an eighty percent savvy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you are. Okay, so let's do a little pop quiz. Okay, is it a lie or a white lie? Oh, okay. Wow. Like a legitimate lie or just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Not correcting the server when they think that your kids are under a certain age because you know it means a cheaper meal. So the server assumes that the kid's under 12. I keep moving. I keep moving through it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to correct them. I'm not going to make a scene here. Mm-mm. No. Nope. Who am I to doubt? Who am I to doubt? Okay, here's another one. Lie or white lie. Presenting your student ID when you're no longer a student so you get the discount. Yes, I would do that. To this day? But no, I don't have my student ID, but I probably did after college. After Yeah, I did you it for a You paid a lot while. for college tuition. If that little card can get you some discounts for a few years after, yeah. I'm not mad at that. I can't think of a lot of places physically that I'm going that do but that. But I wouldn't lie about a occupation because, you know, sometimes they're like, uh, if you're a teacher, you get a discount or like li- oh. like military or something. Oh, like, my God. If you lie for a military <laughs> sorry, discount that was and you're not in the military, you're a terrible person. <laughs> I agree. That's what I'm saying, but I'm, I'm sure some people, or a teacher discount, you know what I mean? Like, they, they will give an occupation discount. Yeah. And I I would never lie about a that. A lot of the ones that but I, I am about sad about, about, like, are the ones where you have an online subscription and you can get something for free or really cheap if you have a student email address, which I oh, no longer have. I know, yep. I would but, have used it. So that's yeah. a white lie to me. That okay. doesn't bother me. Glad, you're, glad we know where the line lies for your ethics. Lie or white lie. Underreporting tip income on your taxes. Lie. That goes beyond lie. That's just fraud. That's like, fa- you can go to jail for that. Not correcting a waiter about your kid's ages is one thing. Tax fraud. There's yeah, a spectrum. You can't, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with that. Glad we agree on that. Okay, lie or white lie. Using a coupon that you know is expired to see if the store will still honor it. 100%. I'd give it a go. Yes. What's the worst thing that happens? I go, uh, sir, this coupon's expired. And I go, oh, oh my goodness. Oh, well, look at that. Or I'll go, is there, is there any way you guys could still honor it? Do you have any other promos, discounts? Yes, that doesn't bother me at all. Always be nice. Don't put up a big stink about it. That's right. Yeah, don't throw a fit. Lie or white lie. Getting a water, quote unquote, at a quick serve restaurant, but oh. then you go and get a soda instead. That's a lie. That's a lie that, too. I feel like that's stealing. That feels off. Here's the gray area for me that Ooh. I'm guilty of. Okay. What if you get the water cup, but you fill it with soda water? No syrup, just soda water, just bubbly. That feels like an upgrade. That doesn't feel like tap water. It's not it coming. is an upgrade, but it's not costing them anything other than the CO2 involved. The <laughs> syrup is where the real money is. <laughs> but isn't there a cartridge for CO2 to make it that way? Sure. So that costs them something. Yeah, but the syrup is where the hard that cost feels like is. A, okay, and is there a lot of... And it's not a... It's out of one of the buttons next to it, not out of one of the normal Yeah, dispensers. I think that's a lie, George. I can live with that. I think that's a lie. Because if someone said, sir, sir, is that water? I go, yeah, it's water. <laughs> there's no sugar in this. There's no syrup. There's no flavoring. Technically, it's just right. water. So yeah, there's it just feels like an upgrade area. that you should be paying for it. I agree. It's an upgrade. <laughs> and you just weren't smart enough to do it, Rachel. Apparently not. There Apparently not. All right. Okay, so here are Moving some things. On. So here are some things that that your neighbors are secretly annoyed about. So, you ready? Is it ethical to throw away your trash in someone else's dumpster? Can I say, I didn't know that this was wrong until like probably like five or six years ago. I just thought dumpsters were dumpsters. I just thought you could just use them and it was fine. Someone else's dumpster. Now, someone else's dumpster versus a trash can. Or what are we saying here? I think like are you saying like a trash can, like the one you pull out from the garage and put it no, out. No, I'm saying like a tape? dumpster, dumpster, like behind businesses oh. and stuff. Like, do you go throw trash away? Got it. Yes, I, I now know that is illegal, but yeah. we have we are guilty of it. I didn't know that when it we were like wasn't. moving into our new house. You have a thousand boxes. You're like, I don't know where to. I can't 
bring this yeah so go find a dumpster and throw it in and it's fine i didn't think it was a big deal i didn't realize like it costs money to to once it gets filled up the construction company is paying for the usage of that dumpster so that is that's a it is illegal so be careful and uh, probably don't do it if you want to avoid getting in trouble i wouldn't do it yep all right is it ethical to put your pet's poop bag in someone else's trash can i'm going unethical not illegal but definitely unethical (laughs) Is it ethical to mooch someone else's Wi-Fi? If it's public. Yeah, I agree. If you're not hacking into it, you know, yeah. if it's password protected and you made it in, that's not cool. But if it's just a public Wi-Fi and you don't have a password, that's on you. I agree with that. Which Use everyone, it. please put a password on your Wi-Fi if you don't have one. Yeah, because people can like get in the well, Wi-Fi and see what you're like, doing, right? Some people an establishment, a business, and they can kind of get the Wi-Fi. I would do that. I can't imagine it's strong enough for me to survive off of that. I need very strong Wi-Fi. Wow. Geez. Someone at work did that for a whole year. Oh, my goodness. So That's wild. I that mean, doesn't you bother me. That doesn't bother on me. On that Savvy. poor connection. I mean, do you know, what's your megabits per second at the house? Have you guys gone to a full gig? <laughs> you don't know what kind of internet you're paying for? No. Winston would. I could text him right now. He could tell you. See? Text him. Do no it. idea. Say, how fast is our internet speed? What are we paying for? But yeah, How fast I, is our internet speed? Question mark. <laughs> she's a voice texter, and I think that says a lot. I think that says a lot. It says, I don't care who's around. They should get to hear my text, too. It's a gift for them to get to hear my text messages. Wow. Is anyone else in here voice texters? You're all just kind of talking driving. amongst yourselves. Sure, while driving. Not yeah. in a public setting while on camera. <laughs> Now we know Wi-Fi, it's acceptable, but please protect your own. Yeah, that's good. That's good. All right. All joking aside, an ethical money decision is simply a money decision that adheres to a set of moral standards. So, Oh, how do you define that? What is our moral standards when it comes to the ethics of money, George? I'm going to just be truthful and not like, well, my moral standards, the three point, I think here's where I stand. Yeah. I look at the consequences of the decision and if it hurts other people. So does this affect someone else? Okay. For example, me bringing my own snacks into the movie theater doesn't actually affect someone else. Yeah. Except that the movie theater is not getting their your business, and then they're going to be low on concessions. They're and getting they're my not business. Gonna be able I paid to... for the movie, which is what we agreed on. Yeah. They're not getting the side business of which me. Which is where they make their... all their money. Don't they make all their money on concessions? They make a large percentage yeah. off that. And so that keeps that movie theater in business. And if it's not in business, it's not employing. The 40 people that work there, now they're out of a job. I don't put that on me that your business can't survive (laughs) because I paid for your main service and not your auxiliary service. That's on them. Auxiliary service. You like that? Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, the ethical standard comes like tax fraud. Not worth the consequence to not report cash. That's right. Yeah, yeah. If I'm going to go to jail, if it's going to destroy a relationship, what did Winston say? This is real time. Uh, One gig. My man. I knew he was a gig man. (laughs) We're a gig family. <laughs> That's a thousand megabits per second, Rachel. That means nothing to me, George. It means you have internet privilege. In our queen size bed. In the queen and size great. bed with baby Charles. <laughs> the and dude baby. must just be making swan angels in that bed. What is he doing with all that space? He could have a slumber party with seven other Charleses. I know. <laughs> Anyways. It is cute. Precious. So what are your moral ethical stand? Mine is, am I going to go to jail? Does it affect anyone else? Is it going to destroy any yeah, part of my fair. life Yeah, that's fair. I like the, um, those are those are great filters. The consequences and is it hurting someone else? You said, is it worth my time? Uh, that was a good one the for The time you. is, yeah, the time is a big one for me. And I just have like a gut about me, George, that I just feel like if it's right or wrong. So there's a part of me that's like, trust your gut. Like if something oh. feel, if it feels off, it's probably because like your personal conviction isn't letting you. So I do think that some Listen people are that. just wired that they kind of can like get away with more and they're okay with it. And I think that's fine. And then others, they're much more strict, much more legalistic, and they just can't. And if they do, it eats away at their soul. So then I'm like, it's not worth it to you. So it comes down to self awareness. I would say a personal conviction. Know what your conviction is. In the gray. Are. And again, some of this was, some of the we talked about was like pure stealing. So, like, yes, not that. we are anti stealing. We can make that clear. We don't want you to steal. Uh, but yeah, personal conviction would be big for me. That's good. Mm-hmm. So, know your values, your beliefs, your convictions. Yep. yep. And don't stray from that because you'll lose sleep at night. You will. It's not worth it. 
That's good. It's not worth that extra 10% code with that extra email address. I think that's strong. That'll preach, Rachel. That's good. All right, George. We're almost the end of the episode. What a journey. And we like to close out every episode with guilty as charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. Oh, boy. Lindsay, I'm ready. We are prepared. I feel like you are. Okay, how about we do something fun where I give you, like, each— 30 seconds tops to give an answer, Ooh. but it's like rapid fire because this oh. whole thing was kind of guilty as charged. You know what I mean? You're right. Yeah, it was like true. an entire episode. So we have what? more. What a joy. Okay, okay. Okay, so first one up. Have you ever paid for one movie and then snuck into another yes. without paying? Yeah. Yeah, when I was a teen. Probably. When I, I was a teenager. Yeah. Okay. Is it ethical as an adult or not? Real quick. Yes, no. no. Teens are stupid. Rachel is not sure, so I think that's yes. You paid, All right. you paid for one movie. Like, it's no, I don't want it to be a habit, but if it was like <laughs> just like one day, I'm sorry. I'm you're sorry. so fascinating you to me. You paid what for one like movie and one are. movie only. And I had All Day Saturday, and there's another one playing. I probably would pop in. And <laughs> pop in. <laughs> you're not staying the whole time, just a pop in. Just visiting. <laughs> Again, Rachel. it's not a habit. I'm not okay. doing it every weekend. Great. But if the opportunity presented itself, I might. It presents itself when you Every choose to do it. <laughs> I'm not at the movies all the time. True. All right. Have you ever gotten a better order in a drive through than what you actually ordered and drove away without saying anything and just considered it a blessing? Oh, sh- a blessing? Yes. A- gift from the Lord. Absolutely. I'm off. I don't I'm think not I've ever back. experienced that. It's usually my order was just wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> I know. Or they missed something. So I got yeah. less than I paid for. And then yes. I have to turn around and I will go back in. Yeah. But ethical or un- unethical if you ethical. did decide to ethical. do that. Ethical. Ethical. That's on them. That goes to user error on their part. Yeah. Okay. You didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. Have you ever taken condiments from a restaurant to restock at home? Restock is a strong <laughs> word. I, I'm not like, I got to get 17 ketchup packets because we're out of the bottle. That's insane. Okay, here's a night. Okay, here's something. Chick-fil-A sauce. Chick-fil-A sauce. Yes, oh, we have a whole they container sell in our pantry full of Chick-fil-A sauce. When do they go bad? Because they don't have an expiration date on them. And then I get nervous because I'm like, how old is this? Is this Chick-fil-A sauce, a weird color I know, color we have a lot you. of Chick-fil-A sauce. And, and I will purposefully, in the order, you get two sauces. So I will purposely keep, like, even though I know we're not going to use them because we have more, like, we don't need it, but you just keep So I that. don't think so, it's unethical. Yeah, they give unethical. you the sauce for Now, if free. it's a full bottle of ketchup at a restaurant table, like, you can't take that, <laughs> or, like, a salt and pepper shaker. Are people doing that? I don't know. I'm just, just picturing I'm just, thinking, I'm just thinking of examples. So you're taking an entire <laughs> bottle of ketchup. I'm taking it. I'm not. But if you did, that's wrong. Oh, wow. Man. No, I would never. I would Dude, take I have some back. restaurants I have another the condiment one. is at the table. Okay, I have another one on this line. Oh, my gosh. Is it ethical, or have you done this, where, like, say you go somewhere where they give you rolls, and you ate your rolls, but then you said, can I have another basket, and then you asked for it to go box, just so you could take some extra rolls home. Oh, oh. sure. All day. That's, That's great. ethical. That's ethical. Okay, the great. The rolls are free. I yeah. know, but then to go out and be like, we've obviously eaten them all, but can you bring another set? Yeah, I don't, th- I don't okay. think that the server cares. You're probably right. I'm just curious. Yeah, it's not It's not affecting his tip. In fact, they're going to get a better tip. Because you got more rolls. My so question is, have you done that? Uh, I can't eat rolls, so that was a hurtful question. What about question. chips and salsa or something? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So extra. I take, I'll i take food to go all the time. If there's any food left over that I know I would eat the next day, I'm taking it. Are you guilty of if someone else hasn't finished saying, I'll take that too? That rarely do I trust anyone enough to take their food unless it's my like direct family, like my wife. Well, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. If you guys have any more guilty as charged questions, we need them. We love them. We want them. Send them our way. Put them in the comments on YouTube. You can DM us at Rachel Cruz, at George Camel with a K, and maybe we'll include it in a future episode. And that's it. All right, George, let's see the drink. I think I did better than We're you. We're about equal. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's so refreshing. I would wow. put some ice in it and sip it like yes. in the summer. It's great. So this was a blackberry mojito mocktail. Mm-hmm. No alcohol at all. It includes blackberries muddled in there. Fresh mint, lime juice, simple syrup, and some berry sparkling water. And the drink comes out to about $1.90. That's not go. bad. No, not at all. So if you want the recipe, make sure to check out the show notes. And if you try it out, take a picture, send it to us on social media. What's your rating on it? Gosh, I mean, maybe I'm going 10, 9 out of 10. I might say 10 out of 10. Like, yeah. I would drink this again tomorrow. Like, it's great. Agreed. And if you want to add something to it, 
If you're of the persuasion, you could do that. You could do that as well. And I think it would be delicious. Yep. Wow. That's a win. I picked this drink, so I'm really proud. You did? Yeah. Someone, Thanks, George. Well, someone sent it to me, uh, a fan, yeah. and I went, that actually sounds delicious. Delicious, and it was. It was great. And it was time for a mocktail, for our mocktail fans. Yes. All right, George, this is closing time. So if you liked this episode we know and you want liked it. more episodes, make Don't sure to shy. subscribe. And please leave a review. It helps so much with the algorithm world that we live in. And we just enjoy hearing from you. We, we really do. do. And yeah. we love when you tell friends about this. And it's yes. such a fun podcast to share with a friend. It is. Because it's not one of those like, you stink with money. It's just like, hey, have fun. And I love hearing about people going, hey, life's hard. Life's crazy. I love a little bit of levity in my day when you guys do this podcast. And we love making it for you. Yep, absolutely. So hopefully it br- brightens your day. And we will be here next Thursday on a new episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. Hour.